Hey, welcome back to Diggers TV. I am gonna talk a little bit about the MSD grid ignition controller today. Something cool I learned as I'm working on a program to kind of eliminate some tire shake problem that I've got going on. I'm gonna use my grid ignition box to help me do that. So uh, I'll take you through the program a little bit, show you how to put a launch retard into your grid and uh, a couple of important things along the way to make sure you don't get tripped up as you do that. But it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so I'll show you here on the computer we have set up. Uh, I've got a USB cable that's hooked up to a little extension underneath the dash, but you may have direct access to your MSD box. If you do, you're gonna wanna plug your USB cable into it, and then you're gonna wanna open your MSD View program. Uh, either came with your grid or you download from MSD's website. And when it comes up and you have power to your grid, you'll get this. Your grid controller will be online. And you're gonna check the box, and you're gonna click view. And you'll see it loading up uh, your, your current grid. Now these are the settings that are currently in my grid unit. And what I've learned, and this is uh, important to retard applications, is maximum timing reference. Mine is 42 degrees, yours could be different. 42 degrees in this case is where the crank trigger pickup is on my ignition system. I can never advance any further than 42 degrees. That's it. That's where the pickup is. I can back up, it'll take retard out, but it can't advance past that because that's where the pickup is, 42 degrees before top dead center. Another thing that can trip you up here is knowing maximum total retard. 16 degrees is what I put in here. It was set at 10. And if you want to be able to take out enough timing to get to where you need to go, you need to be able to move this up so you have enough room to move that retard back. Uh, otherwise, you'll max out at whatever this is set at. So let me take you over to ignition timing quick. This is currently where my total ignition timing is for my engine, 36 degrees of timing. It's locked at that. I don't have anything different. This is dependent on RPM. If you were going to program a start retard, this is where you would do it. You would have zero engine RPM at say 25 degrees timing, and then from 600 RPM, it would go up to 36 degrees timing. That's how you use the grid to put a start retard in. I don't have that in here. I've just got it locked at 36. So think back again to where I had 42 degrees maximum timing in the settings, 42 degrees. My ignition timing is set to 36. So I want you to come over here to this monitor for a moment. This is timing retard. You'll see it says six degrees. Because I am at 36 degrees total timing, it's six degrees behind my maximum timing mark of 42. So that threw me at first, because when I did this, I thought, why do I have any retard in here at all? I didn't program that in there. That's why. That's from the maximum timing. Okay, so let's take a look now at the launch retard. So what you got here is time from launch and how much retard you're taking out, how much degrees time. And I've got a very quick drop and back in. You can change this graph to be however you want. It can go down slow, it can come out fast and ramp back up. Uh, but here I've got it at 0.39 seconds after launch, it's gonna drop five degrees of timing over a hundredth of a second and it's gonna stay there for a, almost a second at five degrees retarded. And then at 1.4 seconds, it's gonna put those five degrees back in and go back up to 36 degrees total timing. And what I wanna show you today is this monitor station over here that the grid program has in it allows you to check that without even having to go down the track. It's pretty cool. So I've got a couple of monitors and you can choose what you want up here depending on your setup. What I have is engine RPM. That's not gonna move because the car's not on. I've got ignition timing, 36. That's where I'm locked out at. And then timing retard. And you're gonna see this move five degrees for a second. It's gonna take that five degrees out, put it back in. And I also have launch input and burnout input because I have a burnout rev limiter button. And you can see how you can test all of your applications. So you stay on that screen there. And I'm gonna push the burnout button and you'll see that light up. It's on. That means that button's functioning. I'm gonna push the launch button next, which is my trans brake. And when I let it go, you're gonna see 
this gauge after almost half a second drop out and then come back in so we're in we're off the button retards out retard back in right so it pulled it out put it back in for a second and this shows you time from launch as the run would go on so that's it pretty self-explanatory simple enough to set up and i thought that was really cool with the monitor that you can see exactly what your setup's going to run if you have different step retards in it'll show you how it takes it out each time you go down uh, it might be different if you have it you know related to the shift because you can set your grid up to shift your car mine set up to shift off of a pro cube box so that's different but uh that's the msd software a little quick look at it and a couple i think important pointers about your maximum timing reference maximum retard that you're allowing again i had to bump mine up to about 16 so i had enough room for this retard to come out because where it was at 10 it was only going to let me actually pull four degrees out and not the five i wanted because it was already out six degrees from where it starts at so just a couple of key things to know and again you can play around with this graph put as many points on it as you want for however long you want uh, that ramp to come in sharp or fast or come in out sharp or fast. So hopefully uh, that gives you a little look into the MSD software for your grid unit. Thanks for checking out Diggers TV.